Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going through why I think every America's team can win champions, or maybe how every America's team can win champions. Um, because some of these are a little bit of a stretch, especially with crew. Um, like they're not, they're probably not going to win the event. Um, but you can kind of figure out a way to like twist it and kind of think about the ways that they could do really well as well. Um, I'm going to be doing this video for every region. This is going to be the first one I'm putting out for Americas. Uh, and then I'm going to do EMEA, Pacific, and China. Not in that order. I'm not sure exactly what the order will be. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. So I'm going to start here talking about loud. Um, I have three main bullet points here, uh, like big like big picture things about them. Obviously, it's been a very hot topic as of late. There are internal issues, uh, specifically between Osbos and Les. Sadak has kind of come out and kind of denied these recently. Um, but it still is kind of a thing that makes you doubt them. I mean, I have personally doubted them. Like, I was going to have them third before I learned about the internal issues. And then I think I dropped them down to sixth in my power rankings. Uh, go check out that video if you haven't already. Um, yeah, they need to either ignore it while playing and, like, continue to keep, like, scrimming as much as they would and have productive scrims. Um, and that kind of stuff. Um, they need to keep, I mean, this is, this is a demon on my list, but they need to keep, like, making new comps or even go back to their old, like, Harbor Viper stuff that's still kind of in meta. Uh, put Ospos on Jet more. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And then they need less to stay in form. I mean, he was the best player. I think I had him rated as my number one player going into Masters Tokyo. And I think he was definitely their best player. He was the only player that really lived up to expectations, in my opinion, at Tokyo. Uh, so he needs to stay in that form, if not play even better. And then another like player form thing. They need probably both, but I think they could get by with one of Cowanzine or Tui's performing back to their level that they should be. Uh, Cowanzine was awful at this event. Tui's was not very good, but I don't think he was as bad as Cowanzine. Um, which, I mean, Cowanzine has not been the same since lock-in, which is kind of concerning, but we'll just have to see. I mean, this team, if everything that, like, everyone's speculating about, the internal issues, all that kind of stuff, if that doesn't, if that's, like, not true or, like, gets fixed or whatever, this team should be able to go on a run uh, to at least top four would be my guess, but I think if they get anything under, like, top... Like, if they don't make the finals, I think this team is going to break up. Uh, we should make it very interesting for the offseason. Uh, but yeah, other than that, not too much. I mean, Loud just won BCT Americas, got to second place at lock-in. Um, but their Tokyo fail failures, it does make this a little bit more... a bit more complicated. And then next up, I have NRG, who I think this is a much more straightforward list for them. Uh, they need to really fix some of their, like, chemistry issues that they seem to have, where it's, like, it's not as fluid as it used to be on Optic with Ye and Marv. Uh, I think Psalm is definitely integrated fully. Artist, I do still have a few concerns about. Uh, it's not like anything horrible like it was at the beginning of the America season or really at lock-in. Um, but I think if they can clean a lot of that stuff up, it's going to make them so much better. Um, and speaking of artists, if he gets back into that 2022 form, this team should be able to make it very deep. Um, I mean, he just... He's been very good. I just don't think he he's been quite as good as he was in that chamber meta that he was... And he really made a name for himself in. Um, and then the other thing, I think they should maybe try to do some more, like, defining the meta type stuff like they did last year. Or maybe play something really off meta like they did, if you remember back to Champions 2022, when, I mean, on this map that we're watching right here, um, they played, I think it was Victor, Phoenix, Crashies Fade, FNS on Killjoy, Yay on Chamber, and then Marv on Omen. 
which is such a weird comp, especially at the time when um, most teams are running like a the fade, raise, breach stuff uh, with Chamber. It just kind of caught some teams off guard and helped them win a few Haven games, especially made FNS's IGLing a lot better on that map, which I would like to see them do something similar to that. Maybe not obviously the exact same comp, but like a similar idea to that, maybe on a different map or something like that. And I think that could help them like maybe have a home map. Uh, I mean, they've had some like really good maps like Haven and Split and then obviously Bind, but they've lost a few Bind games, uh, had some shaky halves on that map. Haven has been a little bit worse as of late, but Split has definitely been their home map. It's just, it hasn't been the best in the world. And I think if they could get something like new, to kind of get them to that point in the tournament, then I think that would really help them out and give them a really good shot to win this tournament, even over a team like Fnatic. And then next up, we have EG, who I think it's pretty obvious where we should start with them. Uh, it's to keep up that individual form that they had at Tokyo, which was just kind of absurd like the difference between the individual form for these players at the beginning of the america season and at tokyo was just night and day um i think specifically you want to see a step up from like calm or demon one like demon one to get back to like the america's form or calm i mean same thing like the playoff form where he was just clutching like every time um they need to like get better at mid-game and mid-round adaptations to where like especially the mid-game ones i think would be a lot more helpful for this team where like potter won't wouldn't have to call a timeout if she wants to see something really changed um and then they can save those for super important moments in games i know potter's timeouts have been generally very well timed and they've been very good off the timeouts it's just more of the fact that they wouldn't have to use them uh, most of the time, which would be very, very helpful. Um, because I don't, I don't think they were super adaptive when Potter wasn't calling timeouts. Um, but yeah. And then, obviously, they gotta keep bringing these, like, cool, like, new set plays, just keep coming up with new stuff on these different maps. I mean, that they were very, very good on on Fracture. Uh, and then, speaking of their Fracture, they need to keep expanding their map pool. Because the second Fnatic banned Fracture in the finals, you knew that this, I mean, that they were going to lose, that EG was going to lose that final. Um, just because Fnatic has such a wide map pool and EG had been mainly dominating on Fracture, like, they got it in both their groups games and it was just a free win. They didn't get it against Loud, but they did get it against Liquid. So in three of their four... Uh, I mean, four of their five wins, because they also got it first map in this Paper X game. Um, four out of their five map wins were on Fracture. Or four, four out of their five map wins in games they won were Fracture. They also won it against Fnatic uh, in the upper final. They kind of rolled them on that map, too. I think that was the most Fnatic had lost by in a while on the map. And... I think if they can get another map similar caliber to Fracture, uh, like maybe their Ascent, which was also very, very good, um, or maybe something Fnatic is good at, like, I don't know, Haven, Split. I know EG Split was pretty good, but it wasn't, like, insane or anything. Um, and yeah, maybe bring out some new maps, or new set plays, or new comps on certain maps. Like, I think they're Fracture, they need to Play a new comp because it's going to get antied uh pretty hard by some teams some team is going to let them pick it into them and they're going to roll them i think i mean i'm trying to think in their group they're probably not going to have to show much which is a very big advantage for this team uh just because they're they have like t1 they have foot and i think it's fpx so in playoffs they're going to get really tested by some team i think on this map and it's going to be kind of bad for them but if they can maybe bring out a new comp maybe just 
redefine the way they play this map, or just bring out a new best map entirely would be very, very good for this team. So just to recap, it's the three main things are, I think the most important is to keep up individual form that they were in. Um, like Bustio has to stay in that form. Giacomo has to stay in his form. Um, and if you could get either Calm or Demon 1 up into that form, that would be very good. I think Ethan's just super consistent. I don't think he's ever going to do like significantly better than he did at Tokyo, even though he was very, very good. Um, so he needs to stay relatively informed, but I'm not worried about that at all. They need to have better mid-game adaptations without Potter calling timeouts, and they need to expand their map pool a little bit to have another map similar caliber to Fracture. All right, and then last up here, we have Crew. And as I said in the intro, this one is going to be a little bit more of a stretch than the other ones. Um, but I do think, again, similar to EG, they need their players to stay in their form. They need Klaus to continue bragging the way he was. They need Nags to go crazy as well. Um, and then the obvious one is Kesnet. If Kesnet's shitting on everybody, they, have a, they do have a very good chance of getting out of that group. Um, but they definitely need him to keep performing at the same level he was for most of the LCQ. Uh, there were some maps, I think it was, I think it was against Cloud9, if I remember correctly, where he just wasn't going as nuclear as he was in the other games. Um, but he still is very, very good, and I expect him to play very well. I just don't know how well he's going to play. He just needs to be owning everybody. And then Melzer... Uh, I'll talk about his calling a little bit later, but as an individual, he still needs to stay up until that level. And I mean, Davies, I thought has been pr pretty consistent over the course of the season. Similar deal to Ethan, where I don't really have any concerns about him. Um, maybe in his first LAN, I think there's a chance that he underperforms a little bit, um, which is one of those things with this team where it's like maybe nerves get to them. But I mean, Kesnet. That won't happen. Nags probably won't happen. Klaus probably won't happen. Maybe Melzer, um, but he's been to multiple events before. And then Davies, I am a little bit concerned about with that. Um, but they just need to also continue improving at the same rate uh, that they were between the season ending and LCQ. Um, there's definitely a chance that they just go back to the team that they were. It would kind of suck for them. And then I think another thing similar to EG, is they just need to have a real, like, home map where, I mean, maybe not similar to EG, because EG just needs another home map, but they need a map that specific, that they specifically are owning everybody on. Um, maybe turn the split into one of those maps where it's Kesna on the raise, Davies is on the chamber, Nags is on Viper where he's been very good, Melzer, I think his best Asian is Astra, and then Klaus also has been owning in the sky. Um, obviously, it could be any map. I don't really care which one. It's just they really need to um, find that home map. And I don't really have too much else to say about them. Um, I feel like this one is a lot faster than the other ones, but just because they're not winning the tournament. Um, it's just not happening. But I think if a lot of these things happen, they could definitely go on a go on a run, as Sideshow said. Um but we'll just have to see. I think it's possible they make it out of their group. But it's also not likely because they have EDG and Paper Rex in that group, which would be kind of crazy for them to make it out. So yeah, that was how every America's team can win champions. Uh, let me guys know what you guys thought in the comments below. Um, not really, like, too many insane, like, takes here. It's just more of, like, a what you need to see from these teams uh, to continue improving and maybe take that champions trophy away from Fnatic, which they are definitely very favored. Take. So yeah, leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.